All right. This is going to be the last part of the Lunar Dragon tutorial. It's going to take us through Sunken Ghost Ship and Olive Valley of Bowser. For Sunken Ghost Ship, not, not a lot to cover. There's some really important things to it. So if you just swim through Sunken Ghost Ship and avoid everything, it's actually slower. I'll show you why. Well, I have to actually avoid things first. Man, actually, I don't know if you can with Yoshi. Anyway, I guess I'll just describe what, what would happen if you did it. Um, what you're supposed to do is do a pair of D-boosts like that at the start. And then, because of the time you wasted by doing that, the Boo scatter plot will appear lo longer than it's supposed to. And then it'll despawn a Boo ring that's normally supposed to be right here. Normally there's a Boo ring right here. I could probably show up by going off screen and coming back. Oh, it's just gone. <laughs> So normally, you would get here, and then that would be the last of the scatter plot, and it wouldn't go again. But because we stall at the beginning, it's just gone. Dang! Because it's uh, because we start at the beginning, or stall at the beginning, it lets the boost sp scatter plot continue further than it normally would, and eat into the spawn timer of. The boo ring. Now, if that happens, if you get the if you get the jackhammer, which is super annoying when it happens, I believe you can still salvage it by doing a screen scroll at the end. Nope. If you get the jackhammer, you're screwed. Just don't get it. <laughs> but if if you do waste a little bit more time and you're worried about it not despawning correctly. You can do the screen scroll to be safe. Another thing to note, the hitbox, Yoshi's hitbox, Yoshi doesn't have a hitbox during this. The only hitbox is Mario on top of Yoshi. Which is why I took, which is why I got hit there. Even though I was barely touching that boo. It's because Mario's hitbox is like gigantic. But Yoshi barely, the, Yoshi doesn't have one himself. So. Just do two quick ones. I'm trying to get a run where I actually don't get hit <laughs> afterwards. I'm always getting hit by that one. Alright, well. Let's do let's do this. This is what you would do if you ran into a situation like this, where you're making the same mistake over and over again. This will be a learning experience for us both. See, that's what I'm supposed to do. How did the boomerang spawn? Excuse me? I don't know if you can get hit by that guy, even. Okay, you can. But I guess you just want to, like, swim up and then fall. Just kind of, like, fall through that one. And we'll scroll to make sure that that despawns. So this, this second room is just so finicky. You just kind of got to get used to it. For here, uh, for here, left, right, should get you that coin. Underneath that's that red Koopa should get you the second coin. I usually kill those guys for uh, swag. No. Left, right, collect the coin. That guy, second coin right beneath him. Kill those two to kill, uh, reduce some lag. 
to the right of that one blue guy should be the next coin. This, this coin's kind of hard. There's no real good visual cue for that coin. Just that it's kind of to the left of the platform. It's like, boom. Sometimes this guy will spawn. If he does, then the coin's right beneath him. And then line up this yellow Koopa with a timer, and you'll get the last coin. Left, right. That guy. Kill those two. Coin. Kill that guy. Boom. Those are all the, the visual cues that I use. I wonder if I leave those guys if they'll spawn, if you'll spawn. I don't know what causes him to spawn. <laughs> okay, but if you, so if you want a better visual cue for that coin. Whoops, at yeah, whatever. So this is to the right. Stay underneath this right blue Koopa. That is a guarantee that you'll get it. The hard thing with this is that if you miss one of the coins and you have to jump off Yoshi to get it, then all your visual cues are dead and you're going to just have to go by feel. And that ends up being really, really hard. I usually eat those two just to be safe. And then that's... That was 28 on the timer. Oh, we got a drum roll. Six. Uh, two seconds is kind of a long time. I would say it's probably best if you do kill both of them, but if for whatever reason you don't want to, then I get it. It's really hard to manage lag in this section. If you're lucky, this guy will spawn. If not, you'll just have to kind of remember where he is. Or just eat the two-second time loss and keep those two blue guys because they always spawn. Ah, that was a 27. I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's not as clear as I think it is, but... Those are the visual cues. The main goal is to just not have to slow down ever. The lag is something you maybe can't control as much as I wish. So at the start here, jump and then scroll right. That's gonna make this football guy run towards you. When, let's see. When the football guy is right, a little bit further right than this. Spin jump off. That'll kill him and get you back on Yoshi really quickly. Do a duck jump over that gap. If you do a normal jump, it'll mess up some of your jump your flights coming up. Duck jump through this gap, if you can. And then normal jump there will... Just make sure to hit the ceiling, because if you don't hit the ceiling, you'll do something like this and slow down. Just make sure to jump into the ceiling. Eat some moles on the way, fly to the moon. Don't get hit, cause you're bad. Then here I do, uh, here I usually have P-Speed. Then I do two taps to hit that ceiling and that'll put me right here. 
Sometimes I also fly to avoid running up that slope. I think running up slopes is slower. And then this end part, you want to jump late so that you can do this. Collect that coin and then jump out. If you don't do that, if you just run, this is what will happen. Now you have to jump out and it takes forever. Let's just do a quick early jump to start the flight meter. That way it resets before you can collect that coin. And then this football guy is the same as before. Jump right around when there's four blocks left. And that'll get you through. Oops. So everything together would look something like this. All right, that's what happens if you jump too soon. So be careful not to jump too soon. It's better to jump too late than too soon. Second one was clean. And you're good. Bowser 2, not too difficult. Jump up quick to this first one. Do a full jump. Because your flight's not done yet, so it'll just put you where you need to go. Full jump. Full jump. Drop the second you see this platform drop. Not the full platform. Literally the second it comes on screen, drop. And then fly the rest of the way. Full flight. It'll put you right underneath the coin. You can collect it easy. I don't know why I'm going to do this, because I could just give give it to me in... If you ever need a backup cape, there's one off screen in the corner, I guess. That's a good way of... a good reason of mentioning it. And then from here, you just collect the coins. Collect the last four coins in here. I don't remember if I mentioned it before, but... If you tongue out with Yoshi, his wings go away and he falls faster. That'll bring us to Ghost House. It's important to jump up these stairs. That's the only way you're going to get P-Speed. If you run up the stairs, you won't get it. Then just fly to the door. Duck, don't hold run. Just let the switch fall underneath you. Run right to collect this coin. Collect the star in that coin. And then into the door. For this room, I jump at the door. And then another jump in between the boo and the block. And then I collect the coin and try and fly over to here. This is a really tough strat. It's also not super consistent. But it can work. And if it works, it'll save a bunch of time. If you miss it, which is going to be most of the time, the backup is to fly here, turn, and get in. This is really more of a feel thing than a visual cue. Like, it's a little bit kind of like in the center between the boo and the... Uh, between the boo and the block again but you should be able to get in there and then just 
key your way to victory. Larry's Castle, full, full flight to grab that one. Make sure to do two jumps there to make the make sure the flight works out correctly. We're gonna dive bomb to collect a second coin. And then cape here. I usually don't dive bomb like this because then you're kinda screwed. You're almost you're guaranteed to get this mushroom. Or you have to wait for the mushroom. So don't dive bomb like that. I usually do something like this. Where I dive bomb down and then come out of it to make sure that I can just jump over the mushroom. This room sucks. Okay, there's no coins, but it's still one of the hardest rooms in the game. Uh, there's a bunch of different strats for it. I'm not going to cover all of them. I'll just show you guys the one that I use. Uh, coming in, you're going to scroll left. Couple of jumps. Immediately scroll right after jumping to get to the top there. Jump, jump. Scroll right. Go above. Do two taps. And then... Like that. It's like so hard to describe while doing it. Tap, scroll right. Tap, tap. They're not, they're not taps, though. They're like a little bit more than taps. Because if you just do a normal tap, then you're going to fall in the lava. Up. Magic Koopa's really not supposed to be there. That's the whole reason we're doing these screen scrolls. He's not supposed to spawn there. <laughs> so I don't know why he spawned there. I got grabbed by the pencil. Dude, how am I getting grabbed? Scroll left. Wait, no. I s you scroll left later. Sorry. Ah. This friggin' strat is so hard, it's messing my head. Is he always in the way now? He's really not supposed to spawn there. There we go. Scroll left here as you get to the fireball and then duck, duck, duck. The ducking is the hardest part. The amount of time you have to duck is the hardest thing to figure out. It's really finicky. He's spawning there. Clip the edge. And he spawned in the wrong spot. Why is he spawning there? I don't understand. He's not supposed to do that. Alright. After that, duck, duck, dang. I usually do a longer duck at the beginning, because you need to also get under this fireball. The other ones are just really quick. If you don't duck, you will guaranteed get grabbed by the pencils. Even while ducking, it's pretty easy to get grabbed by the pencils. And then after you get past, spin jump so that you dive bomb walk, running off the uh, escalator. To give you an idea of how hard this strat really is, the first time I learned it, I spent like two hours practicing it, I think. And it's still really hard. Like, the strat's just super difficult. But everything together should look something like this, I hope. Hopefully I get it. Ooh. 
Everything together should look like that. That's Lara's castle. It ends up being like the hardest castle because of all the complicated strats you have to do there. Thankfully, Ghost House second time around is pretty easy. It's going to start out the same, except... Oh, wait, no. No! Okay. <laughs> I didn't want to be here. It's going to start out the same. We're going to do that neutral jump where we don't hold Y. We duck and don't hold Y. To get... To hit that P-switch. Fall into this gap. Jump to get into the third door. So then you can cape coming out of it. That's all there is to that level. Very simple. Need a blue Yoshi back. This level, duck jump here. Don't do a normal jump because that'll give you flight. And you want to save flight. So duck jump. Grab this guy and then fly up. Don't forget that coin. I usually fall right when the one goes off screen. So... Let go of B as the one goes off screen, and that'll put you on the next coin. Fly up, grab that coin. You can sometimes get in this gap without hitting your head, but some most of the time you hit your head, it's fine if you do. Fly low to get past everything, and then ideally, the ideal situation is you're gonna juggle. Um, I'm going to juggle on screen a bit so you guys can see what it looks like. So the ideal situation is that you'll do something like this. Shoot. Come on. Let me do it over here where I actually have space. So this is what you're aiming to do. It's like a timing thing where you just like, you spit the shell and then you let go of jump around the same time. Like, not exactly the same, but it's around the same so that you can grab the shell again as it's falling. So that's what you're trying to do. And we do it over the... How did that hit me? Oop. We're going to do it over the part where there's a bunch of other green Koopas. That way, if it fails, we can just grab another Koopa. Oh, it's supposed to fly up. That's right. Juggle just like that. That's exactly what you're trying to do. And the reason we do that is if we don't do that, Yoshi's going to eat the shell after we're through here trying to collect everything. Oh no. What do we do? So juggle the shell. Fly low so that you can fly up into that coin. And then just keep high for the rest of the level. So you'll get that coin, and you can click the one-up if you want. If you miss it, you're like, oh no, I, I did it too late. Sometimes you'll just automatically, like, you, sometimes you'll get lucky and just grab another one. Of course, now that I'm trying to miss it, I can't. There, that's an example of missing it. Landing here. Just the important thing is, like, if you get down to one, just make sure you don't jump on it with Yoshi. Come back. 
I pressed down. Check the tapes. Um. So something like that happens. You can jump on it to grab it. But you are going to have to come back to get flight. So we have to have P-Speed for this ending. And then shoot the rest as normal. Or if you're afraid of the juggle entirely and you're not getting it at all, you can just do that automatically. Without even bothering to try for the juggle. But the juggle will be the fastest way to do it. Just practice, uh, just practice as much as you can. This is actually a really bad level to practice it on. The best level to practice it is Star World 5. Frick! I knew I was going to be back here. So Star World 5. This is the best place to practice it because there's just nothing here. So yeah, if you're having troubles and you want to practice, Star World 5 is the place to do it. But here's where you want to do it in the run. After that, Valley of Bowser 4 is the same strat twice in a row, so this is pretty easy. Eat this, do a couple of tap jumps to get up there. Drop after you pass this note block, or mushroom block. That'll put you on this platform, then jump. Land on the pipe so that you can fly up to here really easy. Then thread the needle into that gap. Hold up. Hold up so that you eat this. What you call it? Rock. If you don't hold up, a lot of times his tongue will just go underneath it. So hold up to make sure you grab it. Do two tap jumps. be able to have a full flight to this next area. And then I usually jump like right around here. You don't want to jump too late because if you jump too late you'll hit your head there. See so if you jump too late that happens. Which is fine. It's recoverable. It's super easy, it just wastes a little bit of time. So I jump like right there usually. And then you just and then a full jump at the edge of this platform. Maybe jump a little bit earlier. Maybe jump like right around here, the third third circle in. And then full jump will put you on a platform. And then tap jump, hold jump to go underneath. And then secret exit. When you're coming through the second time, do the exact same stuff, but instead we're going to go over, fly up, ditch Yoshi, and then finish the level. Like I said, the exact same, the strats are the exact same both times. So you really don't have to practice it for very long. Our second time through Valley of Bowser 2, we're going to want a cape. You can jump pretty high. So you can't jump to the ceiling, but you can still jump like that off screen and still manage to not get hit by anything. That's probably the safest. A lot of times I'll jump like this, which also works. But if you don't cape back really early on, there's a good chance you'll get hit. Get the backup cape if you need it. If not, hit, hop right into the crusher. So the path I usually take is something like this. 
This is very similar to the path that you take in 96 Exit when you want to uh, clip through the Crusher. It's going to take me forever to do it now. Oh, I did it. I didn't even believe. Damn, dude. I This is why I don't run 96 exit, I guess. How is that not getting me in? Your chances of clipping in are really, really low. There's literally a two frame window that you're trying to hit to clip in. And I just can't seem to do it at all. I usually am much better at getting this. I'm just not even close. <laughs> I got it that one time. Well, I give up. No, I don't. There we go. So then you would usually get P speed and then fly up there. But since this is a glitchless category, we don't do that. But I follow a similar path. I just run up to here. And then after that, you, you're pretty much set. You just have to stay forward. That's really the only hard part of the crusher is making sure you make that that run from there you can just kind of hold forward and go into the gaps as as you need to so even right here you can just hold forward even though it looks like you're gonna get crushed you can just hold forward you'll never get hit and then for this last part ah, oh, I screwed it up I'll show you the last part in a second. If you decide you want the backup cape. It takes forever to get it, and this trap won't work anymore. Since the crush is already going up. To make sure you don't lose time to getting that cape. Or at least not a ton of time. The strat here is to run right when it comes starts coming up. And then spin fly to skip all that stuff. I think... I think that catches you up to where everyone is. Or at the very least, it's only one cycle behind. But I think that, I think that matches up to the other strat. Yeah, you don't even have to do that. So at the end, you want to duck jump to get into this gap. Ah, I messed it up again. That was a 306, right? I want to see if this is the same speed. I'm also going to save state at the end because I keep goofing it up. I think it is, because this is where it lines up. <sighs> it's Crusher. Honestly, it's it's not the longest level. The Crusher's not the longest auto-scroller, but it's the most monotonous. Just because there's no swag you can do. Yeah, it does come out to be the same. So as long as you get that, you can get that backup cape without wasting any time, which is pretty clutch. So yeah, slide into this gap. And you can go through that pipe way sooner than if you were just hold forward. Come out of the pipe. We're going to fly up top. And then the second that this pipe goes off screen, so right here, we're going to tap a spin jump. And that'll put us right on top of the key.
And then we just tap again to fly over to the keyhole. Valley Fortress. Hold L to, to scroll the screen. That way we can cape past those crushers. If you don't do that, and you try and cape past the crushers, you will get crushed by the last one. Unless you get 51 speed. In which case you will just de-boost out. But it's not worth it. The chances of you getting that are very slim. So just scroll the screen and be safe. After that, kill these guys. Fly up here, and then the second the crusher moves, go right. You'll land on this platform. Jump off. Here we just have to stall a bit so that we can land there. Spin to bounce off of that. Fireball. And then into here. Now, if you're a god, you can do something like this. I usually stop there and just continue. But... So hard to do. You can do that. And I think it is faster. saves a little bit of time but man is it hard to do so I just recommend going to here jumping over that fireball don't get crushed because then you'll cry and then get in the door that middle section is definitely the hardest part I'm gonna go through it again because I kind of went through it quickly So yeah, hug the left wall, go right as that moves. It's really hard to, you just kind of have to judge. If you go too early, you can left right to like fix it. Jump off the left, the right side. And then full jump up, stall, make sure to land on that platform. Full jump, bounce off, bounce, fall, tap jump, and then another tap jump to get through. I think that ending part's probably the hard part, hardest part. Tap, tap, hold. Takes a little bit of practice, but it's pretty consistent. He says as he gets hit by the crusher. But at least compared to compared to other strats that I've tried to do. I used to do stuff like this. I used to do this. Uh, let's see if I can get it. <laughs> I used to do that, which is way harder. That's not too bad. And it lets you skip one of the cycles, which is really nice. And then the Resner fight's the Resner fight. It's the same as we've always had it. Last but not least, we have Backdoor and the Bowser fight itself. For Backdoor, my visual cue, you, you may not be able to see it, you should be able to see it in my... I can see it in my, uh... My recording. But depending on your monitor or whatever, depending on how dark it is, there is a crack right above Mario's head here. There's like the... There's like this thing, but then there's a crack above it. I always spin so that Mario's head hits right where that crack in the wall is. Whoops. We're back in Fortress. As long as you time this first jump correctly, 
A full jump will put you exactly where you need to be. You will kill this guy. And then you'll kill him and get underneath this. As long as you time it right. I think that was too early. I'm going to get hit. Yeah, I got hit because it was way too early. Even if you even if you clip the ceiling, you can still get P-Speed again really quickly. So it's not as big of a deal. Alternately, you can just let, you can let go of jump after you're close by. Yeah, that was too early. You can usually tell because if Mario's head doesn't... Yeah, this is way too early. If Mario's head doesn't go off screen, then you've jumped too early. But if his hat goes off screen, it's like perfect. Two taps into the ceiling, and then another tap jump after you land to kill him. And then you should be able to just do a normal flight from there, or a spin flight out from there. And then if you want to be swaggy, you can spin fly into the door and cape into Bowser's face. So for the explanation of this fight, I'm going to refer to these... Uh, parts of the bridge that overlay the screen, that overlay Mario. I'm going to refer to them as numbers. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Five, three, and four are really the most important ones. So we're going to let Bowser go back and forth once. And then the second time, after he meets three, we're going to run and jump at five. kick this off screen. After he gets to four on his way back, we're going to run and jump at five again. And then every time you go off screen, every time you reach off screen, let go of everything except B. Let go of forward, let go of uh, let go of run, just let go of everything except B. We'll do that part again. Three, go up, run, let go forward and run, hold B, oh. kick that off, he goes to four, I jump at five, hold left, let go of everything except B, and that's phase one. Phase one is the hardest phase. Once you get that down, phase two and phase three are going to be much, much easier. Come to the left corner here so that he just goes back and forth for a long time. Once he stops, once he's upside down, run right and then jump at the right side of the screen. Drop, turn and drop as he passes the cannonball. Once he reaches you, run, jump at five, let go of run. Welcome aboard! Yo, thanks for the follow. So I'm gonna do that phase again real quick. Wait for him to turn around. Boom, run. Fly up. Left and drop because he passed the cannonball. He reached me. Jump at five. This last for this hit, I I time it to an audio the audio the part where it's like Bear! I do it like a second after. Like just a little bit after, not at the same time, just a little bit after. And then after you pushes you, jump at 5, hold left. When he goes inside the Koopa car, hold right.
So, push off, jump, let go of everything except B, hold right. And then time stops when Peach comes out of the car. And then you've done it. You've beaten Super Mario World. You've collected all of the dragon coins for the most part. And all seven moons. You've completed a lunar dragon run at that point. Pat yourself on the back. Feel good about yourself. <laughs> and, uh... I don't know. Shoot for world record. <laughs>